Lola, thank you so much for joining us today on The Voice of America. Now, I wanted again to talk to you about your career as both a writer and photographer. Um, talk to us about how you started, what inspired you to pursue these careers? Well, absolutely. So uh, great to be here. I I actually started in the IT field, right? So <laughs> before I became a writer and a photographer, uh, I was a programmer for many years, but I'd always had that passion for travel. I've always loved to write. Um, my first love was actually fiction while when I was a teenager growing up in Nigeria. So I wanted to get back to that more creative side mm. of myself. And so it was in 2002 when I volunteered with an expedition race in Fiji. That was when I started getting a taste of what it was to be a travel writer because my job was to write about the expedition, write about the places we were visiting in Fiji and send daily dispatches. And it was that moment, I remember it clear as day that I knew that I wanted to, to be a travel writer. And then the photography kind of came on, came in on later. because I, yeah, that came on later. Yes. And they say that, they say that uh, behind every programmer is uh, a creative waiting to come out. So I guess you <laughs> on your creative side. <laughs> now, yes, as, yes. as both a writer and photographer, what would you say is the most effective medium of storytelling? Mm. I think it depends on the story you want to tell. Because sometimes, and that is why I feel grateful as a storyteller that I can choose whichever medium based on what I want to say. So sometimes we need the verbosity of words to describe a place so you can feel it. Sometimes just a photo looking into the eyes of someone is enough to tell the story. So it really depends on what story you're trying to tell. And then for me anyway, is when I say, okay, maybe a photo essay might tell this stronger or maybe just writing really descriptive, immersive words. Mm -hmm. can convey it better. So it really depends on what story you're trying to tell. The platform comes second. You were just telling me that you had a book launch yesterday for your new book, uh, <laughs> new novel, Everything is Not Enough. We were not yes. going to talk in detail about it, but would you describe mm -hmm. it as a, a sequel to your first novel in Every Mirror She's Black? Uh, it's actually a follow-up, right? Because some of the same characters are in both books, but it ac can actually be read as a standalone uh, mm -hmm. book. So, so it just continues the stories, the lives of the women from the first book, but it can actually be read as a standalone book. So that's why we call it a follow-up. Gotcha, you, gotcha. You. I, I, I figured a little bit that that might be along those lines. Now you have a unique background. You were born in Nigeria. Where, where did you I grow up in Nigeria? In Lagos. So Lagos. I grew up in Lagos. Uh, and now you, right now you, you reside in Sweden. Uh, what would you yes. say, how would you say your cultural background has influenced your work and perspective on, on travel and on writing? Absolutely. So uh, so my, I, I am Yoruba. That's my tribe. And Nigeria, we've got over 250 different tribes speaking over 500 plus languages and dialects. And so from a very early age, I was very sensitive to the nuances of culture because we have to live together. We have to acknowledge each other, respect each other and make space for each other. And so that natural uh, empathy for different cultures is what I carried into travel writing. And that's why I really love getting beneath culture, uh, really understanding the nuances of why we're different and why we need to be different and what connects us, our similarities. And so moving to Sweden was just an extension of that and why I've spent a lot of time really, truly uh, getting beneath Swedish culture in my work as well. Mm -hmm. And I read that your work focuses a lot on uh, sustainable travel. Uh, wh why is that important to you? And how do you incorporate that in your photography and your writing yes. too? So I always say sustainable travel, but more slow travel. And what I usually say is, you know, it's all about the pace versus the duration. Because um, how quickly you move through a place, uh, you can't, it takes time to develop relationships. It takes time to really fully appreciate. And so sometimes when I'm traveling through a place, I just pick a theme and say, you know what? I want to get this, to know this place deeper based on its food culture. I don't have to see the big sites, but if I go deeper through one theme, that's a more sustainable way of uh, travel. You appreciate 
the place more, you gain deeper expertise and, and insight mm, uh, into that place. Based on, exactly, you immerse. And so for me, that's one thing, but also making sure that the local communities are fully involved in the decision-making process in that whatever you do does not um, disturb values, tradition does not um, disrupt, disrespect yeah. Yeah, and disrupt. disrupt. Exactly. Right, right. So that's super important. So you have to travel with purpose and intention. And that's what I do. I'm a big advocate for that. Mm, which we've seen a lot in this uh, Instagram travel era, but we'll get to that a little yes. later. <laughs> but yes. uh, some, <laughs> some tips, give us some tips on how you select your destinations and experiences to feature in your work. Are there any okay. specific criteria that you use when choosing what to showcase? Yes. So there isn't really any, you know, uh, set criteria. One, it depends of, on if I'm on assignment. So a publication already has the destination they want to cover. But personally, I am interested in tradition. I am interested in people that work with their hands, that are preserving tradition in a more modern way. You know, because when you work with your hands, it forces you to slow down, to be intentional, to be in the moment, to not... Uh, be distracted. And so that's always pulls me in terms of the work. I love culture. I always, I find different cultures super fascinating. So I will, I always love experiencing culture through sub cultures, lifestyle, tradition, and the slow gastronomy. So for me, those are the themes that really interest me. And then that is what steers the direction of the destination of the communities I, I uh, spend time with. Mm, and I imagine that takes a lot of planning and preparation and research. Um, so let's again talk to, about uh, this changing landscape of uh, travel, yes. the ever-evolving landscape of travel and technology. How do you stay relevant in your field, adapting to these uh, changing uh, technologies and industry? So I always say that um, people should not worry about staying relevant, but worry about the next evolution of themselves as a storyteller. So my work as a travel writer is not to always stay relevant. I am aware of trends. I use the technology to sharpen my voice, but I don't get swept up by trends or by technology in, the, in, in terms of trying to stay relevant. As a storyteller, what you can do is make sure that you're using the modern tools to make your voice stronger. And what you have to do is find your voice first and then worry about how that voice, voice is evolving over time. And so when we think about Instagram tourism, you know, where people just go to destinations and use them as backdrops, that could be the trend now, but I, I call it, it feels like cotton candy versus solid food, right? You know, and so I am in, I am in the business of the solid food storytelling right that, and that just builds longe organic longevity absolutely you know because you are worried about how am i evolving and growing as a storyteller and those who know the solid food will know where to find it exactly <laughs> <laughs> yes yes so again in this age of uh, of social media and instagram tourism like you called it how do you balance the desire of capturing that beautiful image with the need to promote responsible and ethical travel practices Mm -hmm. I mean, you know, there, there is that balance. I think one of the things is making sure that local voices are involved in that storytelling, right? Because people want to people want to be presented a certain way or a different way. Yes, destinations are beautiful. They have to be captured. Mm -hmm. But what's happening around the destination? How are people, or, you know, around that landmark, how are people living their everyday lives? Why not also capture you know, uh, all of that. You know, one of the photography tips I always say is if you see a landmark, actually just ignore the landmark and capture everything around the landmark. Keep the landmark relegated as a backdrop so you can see how people are living their everyday lives in the shadow of this, you know, icon or landmark. So that is the way I, I go about my storytelling. I, I started adopting that type of uh, practice uh, recently, I was in Ghana last year around this time, and I've always wanted to go to Gemstown to look at that famous landmark. And I got there, yes. I went there like three times, but the first time I got there, I was like, you know, obviously, you know, starstruck. I finally got to mm. see it. The second time, I just decided to just film the people around it. 
Correct. And there's more yes. stories about the people around it who have lived there for generations than even this, yes. you know, piece of landmark. So I think you, Absolutely. you have a point with that. Um, so can you share some tips again for, or advice for aspiring travel writers and photographers who are, you know, looking to make a mark in this ever evolving industry? Yes, absolutely. I think it is don't photograph what you think others want to see. Photograph what you truly are interested in. Because once you, and that's how you can start developing your own voice mm -hmm. as a photographer, as an artist, as a writer. Focus on what naturally and organically draws your interest, right? And not, oh, I want to work with National Geographic or whatever, so I must shoot that way. Then you become a dime a dozen. Mm -hmm. And that is what I always say. Your journey might be longer to get where you need to go. But by the time you get there, it's uniquely yours. Your voice has not been watered down or changed by others. They're the course. <laughs> <laughs> so what, what future projects uh, are you excited about? And, you know, I know right now you're promoting your book. Uh, yes. But what other things are you working on, especially in the photography world? Absolutely. So we, uh, I was in Greenland this year on an incredible expedition uh, called uh, the kind of the Pathfinder ex expedition with two amazing teammates, uh, No Sarowiwa and uh, Eric uh, Yaroka. And we were following in the footsteps of the first African who lived in Greenland in the 60s. And we're working on a short documentary, which we're filming and uh, showing next month, you know, uh, in San Francisco, but it follows Tete Michopo Masses kind of story a little bit inspired because he inspired our careers as well. I'm a professional travel writer, she is as well. And so we went to some of the places, met some of the people that remembered him and we're creating just a short documentary inspired by him, but also reflecting on our own journey, uh, journeys as, as storytellers. So that's coming out uh, in December. Uh, you talked about Sarah Weaver. I just posted this on my uh, Facebook. Yes, yes, today. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. No, absolutely. Today it is like a, an hour really, ago. <laughs> uh, yeah, like a memorial. No, today is an incredible yeah, um, yeah. Just day of memorial. He, uh, he is one of our icons in Nigeria absolutely. and just one of those very early voices of, of, of environmentalism and just you know also ethical exploration and exploitation yes yeah, exactly absolutely. exactly so so yeah no it's, it's a, just a, an incredible honor yeah yeah what kind of challenges do you face in your work not just as a woman yes. as a black woman as an african uh you know as in many yes. ways as a as a trendsetter in in, in your field yes so there's so many things, you know, I mean, I, I say I'm like one of the intersections of everything, woman, black, African, mother, right? And so there is what I battle in the industry and still do is um, subconscious, pre uh, like, you know, subconscious and unconscious bias, but pre prejudice as well, where my colleagues who might be white men are given more opportunities, are taken more seriously, you know, I always say that when you put my portfolio next to like one of my white colleagues, people are like wooing and hiring at ease. When they see mine, they're like, oh, did you take that? Oh, maybe mm -hmm. I can take that with my own phone too. And I'm like, no, you can't, <laughs> you know? And it's it's one of those things where I still battle. And even within um, just the industry in general, because I am a black African woman, they want me to only shoot black stories, mm -hmm. right? Who and I'm like, you? you know, I can shoot. They want to box me. And so I see, you know, like a lot of colleagues who may be black photographers as well, where they're like boxed to saying, you know what, because this destination is a uh, mostly black people, then that's where you're going to tell the story. I'm like, I can tell stories from the knot. I can tell stories from the knot. It's why do I have to be, uh, why do you want to narrow my box for me when I can shoot everything? So those are some of the challenges I, I, I see, you know, um, within and, and that's just a few of them <laughs> absolutely I'm, I'm quite sure there's so many mountains you have to climb to to get to where yes. you are. but yes. uh, I want, is there a particular message or impact that you hope to leave with your audience through your work especially in terms of uh we're talking about cultural understanding and, and sustainability yes yes i mean i think 
hopefully what I'm trying to do with my work is to show people, is to make people feel seen and acknowledged fully as they are. You know, I want my work to give people space to be fully human so they can express all their emotions. You know, and I think that's one of the things that, especially as black people or black women, we don't get enough grace and space to just be fully human, to express all the range of emotions. We always have to be a certain way. We always have to present a certain way. And I want my work to leave that legacy of saying, I see you, I see you as you are. I see you, I acknowledge your difference. I acknowledge your situation and you know your voice matters as well. You know, I, I think um, that in the dedication of my first novel, I wrote, you know, to, to anyone who has felt excluded or unappreciated, you know, that your, you know, your voice matters, you're allowed to exist without explanation, and you should never let the world convince you that your, your struggles are invalid, right? Absolutely. So that is what uh, my work, that's my life's work, to Living make people in feel true, seen. authentic selves. Yes. And finally, Lola, I wanted you Thank to you. take a moment to share with us. Uh, uh, I love traveling, so I love to share stories about traveling. Can you share a personal travel anecdote or story that you know left a lasting, um, lasting impression on you or shaped your perspective on, as a writer or as a travel writer or photographer? Yeah, no, absolutely. The one that comes to mind quickly was I was in a border village the border of Uzbekistan and uh, I think it was Tajikistan. There was a village called Ayat and I saw an old man wearing a purple robe and I wanted to photograph him. So I walk up to him with the interpreter. I introduce myself. I say, my name is Lola. And he's like, is that your name? I said, yes. He's like, where are you from? I said, I'm from Nigeria. I'm Africa. He's like, what's your full name? What's your real name? I said, what do you mean? He's like, because I know Africans have longer names and your names have meaning. Mm -hmm. And I told him my full name, Honora Lola Olua, which means God moves in mysterious ways. You know, God's ways are wonderful. And he said, yes, that I wanted your full name because I know your name has meaning. And in that moment, I felt completely seen Absolutely. in this tiny village in Uzbekistan. Wow. Who would have thought, right? <laughs> yes, yes, yes. This place is the, the most unexpected yeah. places where you actually get seen. Yes, <laughs> and, yeah, fully seen, fully seen uh, for who I am as that's an African. That's an amazing anecdote. So, thank you for sharing that. Yes, Lola, thank, thank you. Thank you so much for taking time to talk to us. I know it's quite late in Sweden where you are. You in Stockholm? <laughs> yes, I am. Stockholm, Sweden. Yes. Well, best of luck. Thank and you so much. A busy couple of months. Uh, thank you so much for having me, Jackson. Thanks.